one. Did it, did it start yet? Yeah, it started. This is the part where we talk over the uh, opening video. Well, the yeah. part that I can't hear the video. I know, none of us can. I can't even hear the video. Well, neither can the viewers because they hear us talk. Well. Okay. So. Welcome to Plaid Magic, Season 1, Episode 4. My name is Jonathan Fromm. I'm joined by my associates. Crow 13, yep. Andrew. <laughs> I, just, I just realized I got you guys' videos messed up. Um, <laughs> That's, well, I'll deal with that in the background. We can discuss. Uh, I am uh, Dan, uh, also known as uh, Mr. Macabre Man. All right, great. That's the three of us. Um, <laughs> what have we been up to? Um, we had a um, we had a, a cube. Um, we played uh, since our last uh, podcast, or whatever this is. Um, and I've become addicted to uh, um, an app on my phone where I get to play Magic. Um, you guys have anything? It's called Duels of Duel of the Planeswalkers or Duels. Yeah, of the I don't think we're licensed to say that. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, you guys been up to anything? Uh, not a lot, other than I'm still working on that spreadsheet. And Dan bought a house, um, which should yes. enable us to play, to do more cubing. Mm -hmm. I also have fo more foil proxies if people are interested, but uh, I'll have to find them. Maybe later if we're, if we're under, under budget on our time here. Okay. And Great. So. Let's move on to the topics we'll be covering today. Uh, we'll go over um, the plaid pack, the plaid queue, dragons of Takur review, uh, mailbag, and uh, what's next. Uh, let's get started right away with our uh, plaid pack. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Andy, I don't know if you wanted to go into what the point of this was, since it was your idea. Yeah, so this was kind of like we are just going to do a short... Uh, overview of we're not going to do pick one pack one this week we're just going to talk specifically about cards that are in our queue within one pack and why we put them in so I could kind of start it off so Felden of the Third Path this was a new addition that we just added to enable um, Red to do something a little bit different it also worked pretty synergistic with what we are already doing uh, the uh, Ignis Stop Hauler is a card that's probably going to get out of our queue pretty here, soon here. Um, we do not have enough targets in our queue for this. No. Um, Reanimate. This card is a powerhouse in most cubes, but ours, it's got a pretty base power level because we've kind of powered power down power. our cube to a certain extent. Uh, Rift cool. Cloud. What was that? No, I was saying, uh, yeah, reanimate with the. Uh, we don't have what most cubes would consider bom bombs, or at least not very many. So, it's great. It's a it's a it's a great card to get things out fast in our cube, but it's certainly not at the level. It's a it's a pretty balanced card in our cube. Right. Um, Riftwing Cloud Skate. Uh, this card is a lot of cubes. I won't go into detailed why. It enables a blink deck. So. Um, uh, Cytoplast Manipulator. This card is kind of fits the theme of the cube. It really. This card can be played if you weren't playing a power cube, but it's a little bit more fair version of control cards if you're playing like Old Man of the Sea or something. It, But this card it, in our cube is almost better than Old Man of the Sea. Um, Spirit Loop. This card is just a, a fun card we could probably, I would see in the future, probably getting, replacing it out with something that's a little bit more relevant to our theme. Um, Doom Traveler, I won't really get it too much in that, other than we have a small token theme, or a token theme through t a couple different color combinations in our cube. Dreadbore, uh, we'll be talking about that one more later in the cast, so I won't get into that one. Gugari Grave Troll. Um, 
one fits our theme and enables some pretty powerful decks. Yeah. Um, in fact, I was uh, just talking to Andy about this earlier that um, the Golgari Grave Troll is a is a card that I might play even if I'm not playing green uh, in some of our deck archetypes, just because the the dredge is an enabler in a lot of different different archetypes that we have in, in the cube. So it's is interesting pick. Um, and just to clarify for everybody. Um, that we're not doing pick one, pack one. This is a random pack. We just randomly generated this pack, so there might be more or less relevant cards or more or less interesting cards. We're just taking luck of the draw and, and going through uh, the purpose and intention on the inclusion or exclusion of cards. Yeah, and um, kind of piggyback off of that, we are just trying out a couple different things and seeing what people like, so... Um, Bone Splitter, obviously, it's in quite a few cubes, uh, but in particular, we'll talk more about that one again in this cast because we'll be reviewing the color that it works best in. Um, Fire Main Revenger uh, kind of dictates what that color wants to do, get a lot of creatures out. Again, common theme in our cube, we use gold cards to dictate, help new players understand if I'm playing these two colors, what am I intending on doing? Obviously, Underground Sea, it's a good card. <laughs> a Bird's Paradise, uh, good card. Crystal Shard is, enables the Blink deck and also offers some options for a couple different other strategies. Phantasmal Bear. Uh, that card's probably not in a lot of other cubes, but we are really trying to push the Temple strategy in black, blue, and this card's a good example of it. Um, and I'd like to highlight, I, I think, as well, thinking even about Bone Splitter or any of the other cards in here, a lot of this stuff is to, you know, keep the games going. Um, a lot of times, uh, you know, I was uh, reading different blogs about cubes, and um, I mean, when you when you do a cube, that there's obviously a lot of games, and, you know, we want to get through all of them, and so not to put things to sort of stall and make long, boring games, but to make um, exciting um, sort of games that can go through and there can be a lot of games played in one day. Um, so, I don't know, I, I sort of sense that theme overall and all the themes we do, but also even in this pack that we picked here, um, a lot of these things are to, to sort of move the game forward, um, the individual games, and I, I think that's sort of a underlying thing that we're, we're moving more and more towards in our cube is to to not draw out games but to just um, make people move uh, like make decks that are fun and can move forward yeah combat oriented um, interactive Gagari grape Charl we probably wouldn't think is an interactive card <laughs> in general but uh, right. but in the decks that it's used in and how it's used this card's attacking more than it is being dredged over and over again. So. Right. Yeah, we don't have we don't have a um, a dredge we don't have a dredge theme in the in the cube per se. But um, and and to to John's point, I think that the the point to highlight here is that um, we've decided we don't have a powered cube. Uh, we decided to tone down the power level overall. We found that it was a uh, more interactive draft experience for for our players. Um, and uh, it was an interesting move. The problem is that you bring the power level down so far uh, to enable a certain theme, um, and, and then it slowly creeps up. And that's what uh, Andy and I have been dealing with in some of the uh, card swap decisions, is, you know, where's that sweet spot um, for... Um, the power level of the cards um, to I don't know to to keep things fun and interesting, interactive draft experience, but not have the cube last 12 hours or playing, <laughs> not having 10, 20 uh, turn games. So, all right, well let's let's go forward because I think that uh, when we go through the color wheel and we're talking about all the different things, it becomes more and more clear the reasons why we we make the cube the way that we do and the reasons we make the changes that we do because I think that that's an important part of having a cube is to have a, a group of people that you can have a dialogue with about 
uh, how to improve on it um, as every set comes out. Um, Andy, can you give a, a quick review of the mul uh, multicolor support hinting? Um, we spoke a little bit more in depth about this, so moving on to the third point, uh, the plaid cube itself. Um, we, you know, for more information, you could watch the the last cast in which we went more into detail. But just to quickly highlight. Um, how it is that we were, you know, we chose to evaluate the, the archetype. Yeah, so quick summary. There's an underlying theme in our cube, but when we decided how are you going to get some sort of easy way for newer players to get into playing your cube and have a direction, we decided two color combinations was the way we're going to go and have the gold cards dictate those. Um, most people are going to play two base colors and one splash. Um, and the gold cards kind of give you a hint of if you're playing these two colors, that's the type of deck you're going to build. It's not necessarily the only way you can build the deck, but it's the primary strategy. Okay. And then we, we came up with those four points to evaluate it, the turns to win support factors, drafting priority, and level of commitment. So let's start right away with the um, uh, with the black-red the Kamikaze Aggro review. Uh, so Dan, if you want to move forward, yep. um, I don't know which one of you wants to then just sort of go through it specifically, um, those uh, uh, the different uh, evaluations that turns to win support factors, drafting, and level of commitment. Sure, we'll go ahead. Um, I can go over the, the pieces, and again, we decided that when going through this, it would be an interesting evaluation piece. We don't want to say, oh, we've got the, we've got an awesome cube, we've got everything figured out. We want to say, um, this is our work in progress, and these are some tools that we've devised, some filters to go through and evaluate our cube and say, hey, does this really exist? Do we really support this archetype? Um, and that's what uh, John had highlighted. So, in uh, uh, and because of that, we'll go through here. And these are the these are the things that we decided to answer during these uh, cube casts. Um, first, uh, turns to win. So, just understanding a baseline. What what is our goal for the turns to win on this? And that helps you evaluate what cards um, you're going to be picking. You don't. Um, if, if it's a control deck, you're looking at stalling the game, and if you're, you, and your turns to win are like six to eight or something like that. So uh, in Rakdos, uh, Kamikaze Aggro, we've got four to six, and that ha is reflective of our uh, the power level that we have in our cube. So I don't know if you want to say anything else on that, Andy, or if I'll just move to the next piece. No, other than this is probably the fastest deck in our cube. It we don't run power, and we don't. We aren't running the most power versions of aggro, um, due to the fact that it's a multicolor uh, cube, where you're really forced to spread out to different colors. Aggro takes a little bit of a hit, but we've made some adjustments to try to beef it up. All right. So we've got a uh, level of commitment is low, and to redefine this. Um, when we say level of commitment, we're talking about cards that may not necessarily be in every cube, because uh, there are some cards that more or less are in every single cube. Uh, our level of commitment is cards that are either dead without this archetype, or um, you wouldn't add unless you were trying to support this specifically. So this is a level of commitment low, we have said, and this ranges from very low, low, medium, medium, high, and high. And then can you go over, Andy, can you go over the draft order, the priority? Yeah, so the there are th four main uh, aspects that you really want to try to focus on. And when you talk about draft priority, it also means, well, if you're going to have this as a draft priority or you're going to support this particular archetype, you need to have enough of these in your cube to do it. So in essence, this is also kind of a gauge of what you need to have. Um, so card draw is number one. Uh, there are not a lot of card draws when you're looking at black, uh, red, and the ones that you really need to get, um, you, 
the, the few ones that are there you need to make sure you get so we'll go over more for, further examples uh, burn slash removal uh, obviously you want to focus on that uh, other things would be low CMC creatures seems pretty obvious and then finishers this ranges drastically depending on how your uh, draft goes uh, your finisher could be some sort of reanimator or some sort of hasty bomb so okay we've lost John um, no Okay, you're still there. Uh, my video, I think something with connectivity. Just, but yeah, the only reason I wanted doing, to that up You're just time. doing something you don't want people to see. That's what's. <laughs> <laughs> you told me that it was illegal, Dan. <laughs> um, no, do we want to go on? Well, the only thing I wanted to mention to go back to Dan's point about the level of commitment is low, and uh, this is the third one we've done. We'll do a fourth uh, talking about these combinations, and the, the level of commitment on a lot of them is low, um, the, you know, to medium, and I, I, I think that that's great because uh, um, it's not that you have to, on your first or second pack, uh, decide, um, okay, this is what I'm going to go with, and, and that has to be it. Um, so I I, uh, I think that that's also an important thing because it can very quickly evolve when you're drafting and um, even as you're um, you know making the deck um, in, from one thing to another. Um, do you want to move on with the examples, Dan? Sure. Let's go ahead. Okay. Card draw. Um, I'm just gonna click through these guys. We're gonna talk one at a time here. There's not much to say to Dark Confidant. Dark Confidant's home in our cube is Kamikaze Aggro. So you've got a bunch of low CMC stuff, or percentage-wise, you're, you're on the bottom end of the, of the curve here. Um, so Dark Confidant is, is your friend, because you're getting additional card draw for uh, minimal, statistically, a, a minimal downside. Right, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't think we have to spend a lot of time talking. Okay, okay, sounds good. Uh, Phyrexian Arena, yes, sounds good. Life for card advantage, yes. Faithless Looting, drop some stuff in your graveyard. Again, there's um, one thing I think we wanted to highlight with uh, Kamikaze Aggro. Just, so Kamikaze Aggro is basically what you're looking for in our cube, um, and, and we hint towards that. If... Um, you are just playing black red. The the goal and the the targets your draft targets shift uh, uh, drastically uh, based on a splash color. So if you're splashing blue, it changes significantly. If you're splashing white, you know if you're doing black red white, that shifts uh, quite a bit as well. So uh, faithless looting is a great card draw. So it's selective card draw. You're Chucking some stuff you don't need, and/or stuff you can reanimate later, um, for for possibly some better cards. Um, and then, um, I mean, it's just uh, it's an enabler, um, and it's uh, the the flashback is not irrelevant because the the danger with any kamikaze uh, aggro ish strategy is that you're gonna run out of gas pretty early in the game. And the same could be said with Wheel of Fortune. Same idea. Nate, Angry. next guy, yep. Yeah. Yep. And then Great Bar Muse fits up with the top uh, first two selections. Um, Grenzo, uh, Dungeon this, Warden. This was one that I, um, I... I think this one's a little bit unique. Um, why was this put in the, the, the queue? Yeah, so one fits the theme and two this kind of sh shows how you can uh, dictate and sh kind of push uh, make a pretty complex archetype in our cube because this isn't a straight aggro deck um, this shows exactly what you want to be doing low CMC creatures uh, obviously a theme plays into it and this is card advantage it's it's a way of you know getting advantage of building out your deck to 
do something that, you know, obviously the issue is you run out of gas. Well, you aren't going to run out of gas very often if you're doing this. This is also an enabler for doing some sort of graveyard shenanigans. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's in the card draw section. Obviously, this card doesn't say anywhere draw a card, um, but card advantage ultimately equals... Um, uh, I mean, card draw, the purpose of card draw is to retain card advantage, um, and this card does that. So, I mean, you could be easily, you know, turn six, you're activating this ability three times. Maybe you're, maybe you're getting one to two creatures reanimated here um, after you've after you've uh, dropped him for, whatever, five mana, something like that. He's a 5-5. Five, five. Um, so he's an interesting card. He deals with plus one, plus one counters. He does reanimation, and he says... You should play me with with low curve cards, and he yeah. w he works really well with uh, like unleash stuff, and as well as bloodthirst. Well, and and I think this highlights you know you were saying it before Dan that um, these gold cards sort of point or maybe it was you and saying but you, these gold cards sort of point some of the newer um, players in a certain direction, um, and, and this is of course a perfect example of that, and also it doesn't even. It, 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 it can be, it's a great card even if you don't fully understand the deck that you're playing. You know what I mean? It just, it inevitably, inevitably becomes useful and throughout the, the cube, the, you know, the different games, you start to realize what it's there for. Um, uh, anyway, so don't need to go more into that. Um, I want to go into the burn removal. Yep. Burn removal. One that we picked in the plaid pack. Yes. Let's go ahead. Andy, take this one, please. Yep, so Dreadbore obviously uh, dictates one of the key uh, card choices that you need to draft a uh, black red. Um, you need removal, and this removes just about everything. Um, everything that's important. <coughs> uh, Spheric Vortex, another... This card kind of defines what you want to be doing. <laughs> you want to sacrifice your own life to kill your opponent faster. Um, rights of consumption. Now, this is another s something we're trying to push in red black that, and we wanted to have red black somehow work with our theme, which is plus plus one counters. And it's this color combination didn't have a lot of powerful cards that had to deal with plus one plus one counters. So one theme, one way that we worked it in is that obviously a lot of the, the gold cards and you'll see them sooner is that there's a high power variance, so high power to toughness ratio. So um, a lot of the big heavy hitters in this color combination are going to have like uh, four power, two toughness. Right of consumption is exactly what we want to do. If tack in for four, sacrifice a creature, deal another four, that's eight points of damage. And so we're going to try to fit more cards like this probably in the cube, but it's yeah. a slow process. Yeah, in fact, the last time I played Black Red Aggro before we made some of these changes, I mean, I... I would have, uh, I would have loved to have sulfuric vortex in my deck because that was the that was my problem is I just couldn't get the job done. Again, this is an evolving uh, project, our cube, so um, that's that's all part of it. So, um, and, and one thing I'll say is that um, as Andy alluded, that Dreadbore is takes care of everything. You know, anything that's important. It, you know, our cube is a very creature um, centric, and so um, to have a card like that is is uh, is very important. And um, the other thing I'll say is, right at consumption, I'm, uh, um, um, I, I, yeah, I think um, it's an interesting uh, um, sort of direction and way to sort of point people. Um, can we move on to the um, low CMC creature examples? Yep. I'm going to pump them out. Here we go. Goblin Guide. Not much to say there, so everyone knows that guy. Um, one drop, two, two, haste. Um, slight, 
slight advantage for your opponent, although I think it, um, I mean, that's where you want to be. Give them extra land, but the, the point is, before they can actually use the land to do anything meaningful, um, you've already done your damage. Rakdos Cackler is sitting in that uh, two-color combination hinting, saying, um, I'm a one-drop on black or red. That's 2-2. Two, two. I can't block, uh, but I can deal two damage. So the that's that sa same theme. Um, you let them attack in. You just you're you're trying to win on life total. Uh, Hellhole Flailer. Um, <clears throat> so not a one drop. Obviously, we've got a three drop here, though it is aggressively costed. So you've got a three two with unleash. So uh, possibly a four two can't block, which has a fling built into it, which is right. That's exactly where you want to be in black red in our cube. Uh, and any cube that's supporting uh, Kamikaze aggro. Yep, and I think this was kind of the card that pushed us to try to push this idea of where we want Red Black to be. <coughs> yeah. Okay, can we go on to the finishers? Oh, wait. Okay. Sure. Did you say Wait. Yep. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. So this is probably not what you're going to see on a list of finishers uh, for anybody's cube anywhere. Um, but yeah, I don't is. know why we started with the most exciting one. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Andy, yeah. you want to take this this yeah. section? So. Tombstalker, obviously, I will not think the most aggro black red decks are going to look at that card as being a, uh, a perfect example of how their top end is going to be. But this deck, this cube, and how we just constructed these two color combinations, it's perfect. Because you, you are, are, you don't, you don't care, care if you're, you're trading off or just getting in two points of damage, you just want to. Uh, Get your opponent down to a low, low life total, so you're generally casting this on turn three or well, probably not turn three, but definitely turn four. Um, Hero of Oxid Ridge is pretty straightforward, um, but again, the fling as we were talking about before, this is an example of it. Uh, and obviously, Hell Rider, another example of uh, how you can really. Another example of going wide, and these three cards kind of dictate what we were talking about, alluding to before. Depending on if you're splashing white or splashing green, some of these cards are going to be a lot better than the others. So, right, and so uh, you might be reanimating Hero Vox Ridge Finisher, reanimating Tomb Stalker for your fit. Right, and um, just to reiterate that, so the Tombstalker piece is interesting because he is, uh, I mean, he's a big dumb flyer. He's a 5-5 five, five flying, fine. Um, so he's 5-5 five, five with some some form of evasion with a big casting cost. So you can do him, you know, you're, you can use him as your turn to reanimation target uh, to get things done, or... Um, He's your, like Andy said, or he's a turn for, you know, delve drop. So um, it's pretty flexible in this specific archetype. Cool. Um, I think uh, um, let's before yeah, I don't let's let's move on to the um, to the counters uh, counters monster the the red green. Um, and then we can ask questions just about both of them as uh, in general at the end. Um, Dan, do you want to highlight again um, sort of the turns to win, level of commitment, aspects, you know, stuff like that? Right. So our red-green uh, archetype is a little bit slower than probably most cubes are. Um, again, it's a, so it's a monster's build. Um, uh, so our turns to win is actually five to seven, uh, which is probably 
you know, in most cubes you're talking four to six in this scenario. Um, uh, and we'll explain that uh, more later. Level of commitment, so counters monster. To describe it, we're talking about uh, big guys with counters. So um, specifically this archetype to support it in a cube that isn't our cube, uh, we ranked it as a medium level of commitment. That means that there's probably, a, I want to say five, four to five cards that you would put in your cube um, that wouldn't already be there um, if you, you know, in a in a standard cube, there's four to five cards that wouldn't be there otherwise, unless if you're trying to support this archetype. So this is something pretty specific to our cube. Um, the draft priority, um, highest priority is ramp. So you want to get there as quickly as possible, because five to seven is actually aggressive for some of these pieces uh, that enable the archetype. Uh, haste and burn. So again, just um, effectively costed or aggressively costed um, spells and creatures that are going to uh, hit the face as quickly as possible. And uh, in the case of burn, possibly provide creature removal. Um, uh, third piece is tokens hydras. So tokens for going wide and hydras for going big. And I think that uh, this is a, an example of diversifying your portfolio, is that you want to be able to uh, hit both of those, hit both of those pieces effectively in order to give your, your deck some flexibility. Uh, and we'll go into that later, but uh, we have several examples uh, where uh, we have cards that are hit both of those uh, those targets. They're both Hydras and Create Tokens. Um, yeah, so uh, Andy, did you want to touch on something like that, or do you want to go right into the ramp examples? No, I think Dan put it well. Well, it's the first time. <laughs> <laughs> you cocksucker. <laughs> well, I think I, we went for like a three-hour meeting the other day. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yes. No, well, I'm saying that Dan just read what you wrote very well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the, the ramp examples. Okay. Throwing them all out there. Birds More of Paradise. Day. Birds of Paradise, Gyre Sage, Llanowar, Elves, and Zanagos. Um, so I've read the cards. Andy, go into detail. Probably the only one that needs explanation here is Gyre Sage and Zanagos. Just highlighting maybe the specific relevance in our cube here. Yeah, so Gyre Sage, obviously, we needed a way to enable um, big ramp creatures. And obviously, this fits in our theme. But the other benefit is is that this card, because we don't really have a, an extraordinarily a high number of removal cards, so cards like this actually stay on the board a little bit. And this enables us to play a little bit heavier set creatures without having to play something like Morari's Wake or Mana Rocks. Right, right. And this ramps on curve as well, so right. it ramps with the curve. Zanagos kind of plays into this uh, tokens theme that we have going on with uh, green or red, uh, red green, so you'll see some examples of just how busted this card can get at certain points. Right. Yeah, not to, not to keep beating it over the head, but um, Zanagos, of course, is another one that sort of can, uh, a gold card like that, uh, with uh, really can point someone in the direction of what we're going for and, 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 and not limit you either. Um, I, I think that's also important. Um, not that you have to go red-green in a certain way, um, but it, sh it proves beneficial to, to, to go in a certain way. Um, I will say, though, that um, in our cube, his ultimate is a non-bow. Um, that is yeah. not <laughs> something you want to do in our cube, because there's so many uh, hydras that will just come into play and die. 
Uh, <laughs> you just do not yeah. want to do... You're, n you're going plus one or the zero, you're never hitting the minus six in our cube. Ever. <laughs> Okay, uh, Dan, do you want to introduce the ramp? Ex uh, sorry, the haste uh, burn examples. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I want Andy to do this because these are, with the exception of Ogre Battle Driver, these are all his his boys. Yeah, well, so Clan Defiance, I think, just was uh, inherited from the template cube that we used mm -hmm. two years ago to build this, but the rest of them, uh, Ion Storm and, and Shaman, are specifically Andy's picks. Yeah, so Ion Storm is was actually the car that gave me the idea to try to push some sort of plus one, plus one counters theme and make a cube off of it. Um, I did not think it would work out, but through talking to these guys, we, we kind of came up with a list and worked on it and um, our initial list was horrible, <laughs> but after working on it for a while, and, and we came up with pretty fun lists and came up with some cool concepts and learned a lot from it. And it all started from Ion Storm. Um, probably not even the most powerful card in, that you can be doing in these two colors, but um, it is pretty powerful and kind of gives an idea of what our thought processes was how we we're going to do green, red in our cube. Um, Shaman of the Great Hunt is another card that is probably one of the best additions and I think really pushes you to go into uh, green, red, because it, it obviously fits the theme, but it also gives it some card draw. And this card was a powerhouse in our my last draft that we did. Um, I know I did. So <clears throat> I had <laughs> just a quick uh, story about Ogre Battle Driver. I've I've heard a lot of people say that this card is horrible in cubes and is not, not a, a good, good cube card. Um, <laughs> this card was awesome in this in our cube. Absolutely, particularly. absolutely. <laughs> All right. I was up against an opponent that had two blockers, and they were at 18 life, and I was at four. Um, the, the game was not going my way. <laughs> um, I had an ogre battle driver in play, and and um, there was something else I had played. It probably was shaman, um, and I played. Uh, oh no, wait, it was um, hero of Oxid Ridge. Sure. So, so I had Hero of Oxid Ridge, Ogre Battle Driver, and then I played uh, uh, Siege Gang Commander. <laughs> yeah. That's disgusting. I did 18 damage, in, or it was more than 18 damage in one turn. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. You throw Perforos on there, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was a disgusting deck. Yeah, yeah. Understood. Yeah, um, that's cool. And then Clan Defiance is just, you know, it's sorcery speed, which sucks, but um, you have choice, which is good. Um, uh, and that's sort of why it's in there. It's just we haste burn. Again, we use gold cards to hint at what you're going to be looking at. So sometimes we actually pick not the best card for the color combination as long as it gives... Um, some sort of hint towards the drafters as to what they should be looking for. So um, that's something that uh, that we've we've accepted as part of the cube construction. So okay, um, l let's move on to the the tokens hydras um, examples. I, I I think this is a little bit unique to our cube. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So Siege Gang is probably in most cubes. Hooded Hydra. Yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna put a little bit of a parental advisory on the pictures that you chose here? <laughs> <laughs> I have not painted any of these. They well, actually. I, hold on. Hold on. Let me let me take a second to um, to thank you, Dan, because um, maybe our viewers, uh, listeners, don't understand that Dan spends. I mean, at least 15 to 25 hours 
uh, in preparation of our cube to find the, the best art and sometimes make his own art for cards that you see pop up here. So I'd like to thank you, Dan. Um, I've enjoyed every card. I've enjoyed the art that you've chosen. So thank you. <laughs> sure. Sure. I like I like the title Hooded Hydra. So um, that's uh, there's a connotation there of you know. Uh, but uh, so, so. <laughs> let's, let's not do all of that. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Just give us the, the names Siege, of these guys. Yeah. Siege Gang Commander is probably most cubes um, because most cubes are running some sort of goblin theme. We absolutely do not. We have zero anthems for goblins. Um, that's not something we do. This, however, provides tokens and does and does some throw in the face stuff. So um, that's where you want to be um, in red green. So you've got uh, it's high casting cost, but you're throwing uh, several creatures in play that you can then f you know, finish off your opponent with the with the fling effect. Um, Hooded Hydra, not in many cubes. Um, I think it's fantastic. However, we need to get at least one other morph card in the cube. Otherwise, uh, he loses his mystery. Um, I don't know. Uh, is the only cu he's the only morph card, correct? Do we have any other morph cards? No, we don't no. have any other. No. 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 So, so if he comes down face down, you just know it's a hooded hydra. That that sort of sucks. Well, but or your opponent is cheating. <laughs> <laughs> you could. You could. It could be an island. Um, yep. so, um, anywho, uh, so, uh, but that plays again, like I was mentioning before, into the Hydra's slash tokens theme. So, um, Apocalypse Hydra, again, works, uh, with ramp on curve every time, um, and has, uh, to the face damage. Oolashed works um, we specifically wanted to get, uh, I think we have like 50-50 X-Hydras uh, versus non-X-Hydras. So Ulasht is in the non-X-Hydras section and feeds the uh, uh, tokens as well as the uh, counters theme. So um, I think... He also has an in-the-face ability here. Yeah, one, remove a plus one with yeah. some counter, yes. Okay. Well, so, and he also has one of the coolest names of a magic card. Sure. Yeah, his That's name cool. starts with a U, which is pretty uncommon. Who uh, lost the yeah. hate seed? <laughs> right. um, yeah. By planting, the way, guys, we're going to have a seed of hate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is what so, we do every month with this cast. Um, yeah. <laughs> a seed of hate. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we, we've sort of come to the end. Uh, last time we spoke a lot about, and I'd like to um, ask again this question of, um, you know, when we were creating the cube, um, how much? Because uh, it's interesting to see how we sort of evolved into these archetypes um how creating it it sort of naturally became a thing and a lot and then how much of it was like uh, a work that we had to do because i think this is interesting to a lot of viewers um how much um you know you, you play a cube and you see naturally this sort of thing happens so we should put this in it um and, and, and how much just naturally people revert to a sort of type of thing. And, and not so simply as to have a, a bunch of goblins, so obviously people make goblins dead. Um, do you have anything to say about that, Andy? Yeah, so, like I said, Ion Storm was something that kind of invoked this whole mission. And it was from that moment when we then we sat down started looking at all the different options we had and we just put down put as many cards that would fit the theme that were even respectably good um once we did that we started honing down the list and from there we just kind of went from there to figure out well what's already there that we can kind of destruct construct some sort of synergies between these two color combinations and these two color combinations and then we just push that um, 
obviously like Ulash the Hate Seed is another example of a gold card that kind of really pushes a lot of cool synergistic uh, ways to win and have a fun, interesting, and interactive deck. That was the, the other big push for designing this cube and trying to go with this theme was if it wasn't interactive, we didn't really want it in the cube at all. Um, we really try right. to push combat and push uh, anything that was interactive or interesting and synergistic. Well, and I think that's one of the, the, the great things about counters, um, tokens. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we've tried to, to put into this, not only are they, um, like you said, they're, they're interactive and they're fun, but they also push the game forward. Um, so, so, so not just that you have a, a standoff game of, you know, 50 minutes, um, but you're doing something constantly. Right. It's not like we're playing moat and then someone just has to wait until someone kills the moat. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> moat. God damn it. All right. Dan, do you want to say something before we wrap this up and move off to the, the new, the, the new um, dragons? No. Okay. Well, let's, move, <laughs> let's move on to that. Uh, great graphic again, Dan. Uh, You're welcome. You're welcome. Just cannot thank you enough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's go through some of these cards. I don't know how much we have to spend on each one. Um, I think most of these were, were picked by Andy because um, he certainly is the best of us. Right. So I spent all <laughs> my time on preparing the slideshow, and Andy spends all of his time on the actual content. So and I spend all my I time. Literally, the first two slides here. So the first, um, the first twelve cards for sure are Andy's. No, thirteen cards. There's one card from the third slide that's Andy's as well, and the rest are mine, and they are not well picked. But Andy, you can go ahead. Take well, I have for the a next couple of slides. cards too. Um, but I only chose <laughs> based on the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, do you want to go? Yeah, so um, there were the theme. So uh, the Denver, the two morph cards in this uh, slide, I was looking at possibly replacing spells to uh, put these in to replace spells that we have in the cube so that we can open up spell slots to other effects that currently we don't have enough in um, and just to provide more or if we need more of that in the cube uh, to provide more sources and still keep it more creature oriented also all these cards deal with plus one plus one counters and I'm really trying to um, if at all put more cards that fit the theme and because I feel like we have some powerful cards in the cube but they're really just not as powerful in our cube because of the fact that it's just a better strategy to make a more synergistic deck than just play powerful cards just sorry just sorry to interrupt but just to clarify I mean this isn't like a set review in the sense of um, going through every single card and saying what we think about it but this is these are some cards that we are certainly going to consider to put into our cube um, in the future and, and not only our cube but cubes in general that these cards are valuable for that um, so so just to, to make sure because we did do a set review um, previously um, several months ago and um, and that, that was more sort of everything but but this is really geared towards cubes and, and our cube um, Andy, sorry, continue. Yeah, exactly. I should have probably mention that. Was that we thought that last time when we did the set review, there are enough people out there that will do set reviews on cubes and tell you which ones to put in a power cube or not. And to us, they're probably better at doing something like that. So we decided to just go with cards that we are considering from the new set to put in our cube specifically. Our cube isn't a power cube, so there's probably a lot of cards in here that we don't have in this list that other people would have in their lists. Um, right, exactly. We, so this is this is um, 
This is an exercise in card evaluation specific to a cube for all of you listeners who are familiar with um, exactly what our cube is, then you'll understand, which is which is nobody. Um, but regardless, so we <laughs> we are we are evaluating these cards and going through the process that we go through to say for our cube. Um, how do we evaluate these cards? And I think that's important. Yeah. No, and also, I don't want to give away um, what we're going to say um, in a few minutes when we get to the mailbag. But, I mean, we have, you know, users are asking about, you get to a certain point when, you build, when you're building a cube, and it's not just about, okay, this card is better than this card, you know, like, you know, mana cost-wise, power-wise, ability-wise, like... It's not just about this card's better than this card, so I'm going to replace it. There's there, there's a lot more thought that's put into it in the sense of how do I want to make, how do I want to build my cube, um, and so um, you know, and we'll get to that question later. I'm sorry, but I think that that's interesting. Then when you look at sets that come out, not just oh, is this card better than another card that I have, but is this card going to push the theme, the archetype that I want better. Um, so anyway, Andy, can you just let's let's go through these six. Right. So the survivalist, this card's gonna be probably a replacement for Ingnet Stop Holler. Um, does Which the same brings thing. the curve down considerably. Right. But yeah. it allows, allows us to get a different card on this list in there. Yeah. Which is an effect that we need. Um, yeah. I I like to, whenever we can, put one, cards that can replace spells, creatures that can replace spells that are narrow, and disenchants and naturalizes are horrible in a lot of cubes, and in particular, it's, they're not very good in ours, because they sit in your sideboard, and then you have to remember to put them in, or make some sort of decision on putting them in, and then they still might not hit anything. Um, where this... It doesn't matter if you have a target. At the very least, you have a 3-2. Um, right. That probably is getting some more benefits because it's got a plus one, plus one counter on it. Or a 2-2 two, two on 3 that you, when you get mana hosed on green. But right. still, you know, there's like three options here. It's very good. Right. Um, Avatar Resolute. We had actually... Are very much considering that this card is better than Termogoyf in our cube. Um, it's kind of crazy, but really, this card would be a powerhouse in our cube. So it's we're looking ridiculous. at that. It's yeah. <laughs> when when I saw this card, I was I thought that one of you convinced um, uh, uh, Wizards Arn. of the Coast to make this card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, the the whole Tarkur. Um, block has been interesting because in, in also Magic 2015, I mean the, the last core set um, there's been a lot of like tokens and counters matters stuff, so I mean Dan, where, where, do you, where do you think that they're learning their stuff from? Well, they're clearly watching the stream yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We have you three know, viewers Maro, Maro, we know you're watching <laughs> Yeah, exactly, there are three viewers, and that's how many people are the heads of our <laughs> the coast <laughs> Sorry, let's keep going but that, that that's, a, that's an amazing card, I mean, yeah. really, it's disgusting Yeah, um Dem Protector. I, I want this effect in our cube, but I don't know that one in spell form. Uh, so this is a card that's borderline if it will get in or not. Um, and then I call this uh, the uh, Dragon Fight guy. This guy is... We the need Foe Razor. What? We're yeah. on Foe Razor? Yeah, we're on Foe Razor. Okay, okay. We realize at some point that green needs a little bit more of a way of handling uh, just those those creatures that obviously they're not going to attack with a way to take out um, uh, what would be an example of a creature that you're not going to attack with, but <laughs> but uh, this we need more fight mechanics in there, and we don't have a lot of spell slots that are open. Um, 
So we are putting in one fight card into the cube already, but this offers a, another way of one plus one plus one counters. It's not a lot, but it's another one, and it gives green some at least one flyer. It's kind of funny because this is the only dragon that we have in the cube, and it's in green. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, which doesn't exist. But he's a fantastic reanimation target. Right. <laughs> so. Uh, inspiring Call. This is another bomb in our cube. And we, me and Dan were just talking about before the set came out. We need to get a way to give green some card draw. <laughs> this card in fact, is, we, is, we included Tezzeret's Gambit as a green card draw. Right, because <laughs> it was Phyrexian mana. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but this this because we incredibly need uh, card draw, and how much counters is in green? I mean, this is just another one that's. I mean, <laughs> Andy, you're already saying this is in our cube, and we haven't even decided that yet because it's so obviously going to be. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that it's never a dead card. And even if you don't have any plus one plus one counter, so at, at no. least you yeah. get to have instructability on all right. your creatures on right. turn. Right. They were smart adding that clause. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, it's not even smart. I mean, they're, yeah, yeah. It's beyond that. I mean, it's it's made for something like this. Yep. Salt Road Quartermaster. This card, I don't know. Um, it combos off with a few of our cards. And the three drop slot in green isn't that great. So I was just putting in this as a possible card to put it in there. It's probably not going to get in there, though. Uh, we can go on to the next slide. Unless anyone else has anything to say about those. No, no, we need to keep moving on. Yep. We're already over time. Minister We're supposed to be finished pain. now. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, you want me to talk about these two? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, Minister of Pain. We are just, I was just looking at a way of dealing with the plus one, plus, the counters, uh, the tokens. Tokens, creatures. tokens, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the command card, this is just a powerful card that it's probably good enough to get it into our queue. Um, but. Whatever. It's yep. 2 3 on 2 exploit with a special. Ability that has the pos so it's not a dead card. It's just not aggressively costed. However, if you're playing against a token strategy, certainly this is a bomb. So yeah, I think we can honestly do better and just wait for something better to come out. Yeah, but it's a little overpriced. Yeah. Um. Jutwise oh, command. Yeah. This card's probably going to be hard to get into the cube because if it's really hard for us to put gold cards that are just good. Um, this is a pretty powerful card that I was interested in having, and it has some cool interactions. Mm -hmm. um, the... what is this one called? Profaner of the Dead. Right. Um, this helps out our blink strategy. I just thought it was interesting. Um, obviously, you can another way of dealing with uh, tokens. Tokens is probably one of the more powerful strategies in the cube, at least if you get all the right pieces. It is. Um, Iri Shaman. This card. Uh, we're just looking for more aggressively costed cards in red that gives it a little bit more card draw, and this one does it. Um, Scary the waste. Secure, uh, secure. The waste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, secure. This card works in s any deck that's playing white. Just yep. about. <laughs> so. Yep. Uh, this it, it, we were just talking about this today at lunch. I mean, this is this is just an end all. Yeah. This is gross. Instant speed. X no, token. end all in terms of like creating tokens. Like this is what you now just put in. Like there's nothing else to there's nothing to say about it, so I, I think it sort of has to make its way into the cube. Yeah, combos off with like Perforos over Battle Driver, and then we have a, a few other cards too that it really just goes off. Yeah. Sigil uh, Captain. Yep. 
Yeah. Uh, Stratus Dancer. Yeah. Um, just another effect deals with plus one, plus one counter, so I was interested in at least looking at it. Yeah, and uh, we're very interested in our cube since we're like, I want to say 85% creatures. Um, we love spells on a stick. Uh, some of the Megamorph stuff fits that uh, category, so yeah. And one thing I will say about this one, this is a, a spell on a stick that isn't going to get eaten up by the blank deck. Yep. Um, so mm -hmm. it will get more into like the aggro strategy or the tempo strategy. Yeah, of, like, tempo. Black, yep. black, black blue, so that was another reason why I was interested in this one. Yep, yep. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next six. Okay. You have one card here, Andy, and then I'll okay. go into the other ones. Zergo Bell Striker. Um, this card, I'm always interested in any of the one, two twos uh, that come out, and this one probably actually fits our cube a lot more than most of them. Uh, combos off with a lot of the strategies that Red's playing with. That's all I'll say. Yep. Yeah, because he works with Ogre Battle Driver. He works with uh, Perforos. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that he he likes. Um, uh, whatever Hell Rider. There's there's many things. So, yep. yep. <clears throat> okay. Dromoko's Command. Uh, this is something actually Andy had mentioned this, and I put it in because he didn't have his list of cards. This was something specifically to replace what was the Selesnya Charm, I think. Yeah. Right. So, um, more options, instant speed um, than Selesnya Charm, but doesn't create a token, which is something that is specific to green white. So. If we didn't have green-white tokens, this is an auto-include. Um, but uh, that the Selesnya charm, as a hinting in a multicolored um, uh, card, uh, this is less obvious. But this is a better card. Um, so that's, that's why I chose that guy. Um, Myth realized. This was specifically because we had identified in our last cast um, land tax as a one-drop enchantment that needed to be taken away. I think we put in um, what's that card called? The angel card. The um, ascension. Uh, Luminarch's ascension. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Right. So that was a two-drop that we replaced a one-drop enchantment on. So the the point of Luminarch ascension is. Um, that few turns go by and you can win the game by going, basically going ultimate. So, um, dropping angels into play for two mana. However, this guy, I feel like this guy curves out, so I listed him here just for that specific reason. I, I think that, uh, depending upon how we want to go with green, uh, green-white and then white in particular, this might fit that role better. So it's there for that. Um, Kologan Stormsinger. Um, again, one drop, one one haste. So fine. If uh, it's in your opening hand, that's an option. It's got Megamorph, um, and it can give something else haste until end of turn. Um, not a great card, I think, but something that uh, can add some value to our cube. Um, Sunscorch Regent. Um, our five drop slot in white is actually pretty solid. It contains three cards, which is uh, the um, uh, Cloud Goat, uh, Cloud Goat, the Archangel Angel Thune, Archangel and, uh, Thune. Yep. and uh, Revel Arc. Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, so, we don't have any slots here. Um, however, this card is probably finishing the game. And I would consider this, if I was going to put something in, um, or take something out for this, it would probably be one of the Planeswalkers. And I don't know which one. So, 
Yeah. Because um, uh, we have two white planeswalkers and one planeswalker in every other color. But that's why I put I uh, threw this guy in. Pacifism this is a card that's been around for a very long time. I put it in specifically uh, because I wanted to highlight the flavor text at the bottom. Bottom. If I fight, I might step on a butterfly. That would be sad. So. <laughs> 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 so we will not put this card in our cube, but I just want to highlight that uh, perhaps the uh, Wizards of the Coast uh, development team um, is uh, uh, they're full of dry humor, I guess. Right, right. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, John, we're done. We're done. Yep. Now, is there is there anything um, you want to say to like highlight the whole thing? I mean, I, I guess the only thing is to say is that um, obviously um, going forward, these cards will be um, inserted into our cube, and we'll try to highlight them when we pl do a never been plaid. In the sense that we obviously have to take some cards out of our cube to put these cards in, and we'll relatively justify um, how these cards are better um, hopefully better than we did today um, moving on now to the mailbag um, I alluded to this before um, you know we've been just constantly been receiving emails from yes, all the so <laughs> many emails it's, uh, it's from people like that this. aren't us yep yeah <laughs> and it's moments like this where you I think a lot about how it's tough to be famous um, because I just can't go, um, I can't go an hour of my life without receiving hundreds of emails. Right. Um, and, uh, this was one of them that we chose, uh, this person, um, I believe this was, um, Yakani from uh, Alabama. And he said, I have reached a point in my cube building process where the decisions about what cards to include are getting tough. It's no longer as simple as card A is better than card B. Include card A, as we sort of alluded before. Uh, sorry, that was uh, within brackets. To finish what he was saying, now I need to think about what archetypes to support and a lot of other stuff. Where is a good place my cube critiqued by other cube enthusiasts? I think that was improper grammar. The, basically, um, he's asking where um, where someplace. Um, Dan. So number one resource there is us. Send us your cube. Andy and I are happy to critique your cube. John is not, but um, uh, that's I will okay. do it. <laughs> yeah, John will critique your cube specifically. It just you... might not be what you're looking for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Needs more cowbell. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, certainly, I mean, most people know you've got MTG Salvation. They have a sub forum just for cube building, so that's a great place. Um, there's also the forums over at cubetutor.com, which is what we use to manage our cube. Um, that's a great resource. So. Um, yeah, and yeah. just to highlight, just to highlight, I mean, we really are um, happy to, um, to 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 hear about your cube, and you know, there's a lot of different ways you can go with it. There could be, you know, card restrictions in terms of what you might own or don't own, and I I think it's really possible to make um, any cube fun. I, I, that that that's why I love it so much. I think we're we're going back to that original idea of uh, playing magic is just a fun thing to do with your friends. And uh, I think that can really be done within any budget, um, within any magic um, collection. So, um, you know, uh, bounce it off us, your idea for your cube, and we'd be very happy to, um, you know, give our opinion. So Andy, I'll you were just, saying something? I'm sorry. I'll just make one point. Forms are fine to kind of get a baseline of general ideas of how to construct a cube, kind of the pitfalls you run into initially. The issue is is that it's not like a standard deck that you can just go and hand somebody a 60-card deck and say, hey, what do you think should be in this? And how? I mean, this is 360 cards. Minimum, uh, minimum. Right, 
at minimum. It can go up to 500, 800 cards. Yeah. Yeah. It is really hard to look at that list and try to give some sort of, um, you know, good feedback, informative feedback without having played it. So I think your number one resource when it comes to this is one, your how the drafts are dictated and your play group really talk to your play group ask them what's fun and what's what actually works i think some of the pitfalls when you get into these when you're trying to actually push some sort of archetype in it is that you get too set on well this card's in the cube because i really like it but you don't know what it's necessarily doing in your cube and one uh tool that we already talked about in our cast was the tool of really dissect your cube and figure out the archetypes and how are you like expressing those archetypes to your play group how does it really play out when you actually sit down and figure out which cards in each color fit what archetypes you start finding cards that are dead in your cube and that don't actually work um, even though they're powerful cards and they're in everyone else's list, in your cube, they don't actually do as much as they do in a, a list. And you realize, wait, this card's in another list because they play XYZ. I didn't even realize that. Like, right. we would never play Upheaval in our cube. There's no way it would work. <laughs> even though it's a bomb. Yeah. Right. In most cubes. Yep. Right. Like, yeah. Well, and, and, well, anyway. No, just just that when you say in most cubes, I, I mean these things are a bomb in any cube. The, the the point is is does it work in the sense of the um, proliferation of your cube? Um, the only reason I cut you off is to say that um, this was something. Um, this is something that we want to highlight in our next cube in our next cast, which will be Thursday, April sixteenth. Uh, the same at 10 p.m. Um, Central Standard Time. And we want to talk about cube management, um, how we do it, cube design, uh, uh, taking a break from the guilds, and card swaps. So, um, yeah, I don't mean to cut you off, and you guys can, um, you know, finish up with what you were going to say. Just just that, um, I mean, the reason we're doing this, ca- you know, this at all, this, this cast, this Twitch, this whatever we're doing here, um, the reason we're doing this at all is 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 to try to share, um, you know, share that information of how we got to this point because I think that our, our our cube is is doing very well in the sense that we have a lot of new people to the cube, a lot of old people that have been around a long time in the cube, and everybody's having fun. Um, games are, are are we're progressing through games. People are playing a lot against a lot of other people and. It's it's um you know it it's really it's it's really a lot of fun. It's one of the, it's it's probably the most fun I've had playing Magic. And so, um, to, we want other people to um, realize this as well. And so, um, anyway, again, as Dan alluded before, I mean, you can you know send us your questions and send us um you know your your lists and we can glance at it. But as as Andy also alluded before, just just have an open dialogue with um. With your 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 the cube members, um, and and try to build it forward because that's really what's awesome is is working together to um, to make the best cube possible for a better tomorrow. Yeah. For um, a better. So so <laughs> and, uh, contact us at uh, plaidmagic at outlook dot com, uh, and we are on Twitter at plaidmagic, uh, and our blog which covers all of our actual draft and cube tournament results at iPladMagic at blogspot.com um, uh, those are our contact pieces Andy if you want to wrap this up I think we're we're towards the end here yeah you can contact me at crow 13th on Twitter other than that email me through our e- uh, email address so. You can contact me for any questions that you have not concerning magic. Uh, <laughs> like sandwich questions, like I dragon. know a lot about sandwiches. <laughs> I, know about, uh, like, I know about the the, the finances of um, purchasing alcohol. Irrigation. Uh, um, 
Hollow bubble <laughs> solar eclipses. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do we want to go over that? I sent that out. You guys didn't. <laughs> that was a fantastic post. I thought it was great. Um. It made me uncomfortable. Uh, let's wrap. Let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. Um, I don't know what tab you're on because I stopped looking at that anymore. But um, check us out. Send us emails. Um, tell us how much. Um, you don't like Love band, yeah. um, a lot of things like that. So uh, um, thank you for viewing. I don't know if anyone will or has watched viewed this. <laughs> no. Thank you, and uh, God bless. All right. Good night, guys. Thank you. I have an, an exit music. <laughs> <laughs>